and welcome to the Penguin Prof channel. In today's episode, we're going to keep talking about chemistry. Everybody wants to know about reduction and oxidation reactions. Before we get into it, I'm going to ask for your support. Take a second, click those buttons. It makes a big difference. So I'm assuming some knowledge here. Um, if you are not comfortable with atomic structure or how many bonds carbon should have, go ahead and watch those videos first. You'll find the links down there. Okay, you guys, redox, here we go. Um, redox comes from a combination of the terms reduction and oxidation. And this is really important for biology students. These reactions are all over the place. You will spend a lot of time looking at cellular respiration and photosynthesis and what the electron carriers are doing. And your textbooks will generally have color-coded equations for respiration and photosynthesis. Like this is supposed to help somehow. And you're just supposed to know that glucose is being oxidized to carbon dioxide while oxygen is being reduced to water. And don't those colors just help you so much? No. So we're going to do it Penguin Prof style, okay? There's two rules that you have to remember for oxidation and reduction of organic compounds. Oxidation, you're going to be looking at the addition of oxygen and or the removal of hydrogen. For reduction, you're going to be looking at the opposite, right? The removal of oxygen and or the addition of hydrogen. And for most general biology students, that's really all you need to know, all right? So it's really not that bad. And um, I'm going to show you how. How oxidized a compound is, is where it starts to get a little bit confusing. And there are different levels of oxidation or degrees of oxidation. And we refer to this as an oxidation state. Now here is the fine print. The oxidation state is a hypothetical charge that an atom would have if all the bonds to the atoms of different elements were 100% ionic. Okay, don't get lost, don't click out yet, okay? The oxidation state of hydrogen is plus one, since a hydrogen ion is H plus. The oxidation state of oxygen is minus two, since an oxygen ion is O2 minus. For our purposes, guys, these are the only oxidation states we have to worry about in order to look at what carbon is doing. So, there is an analogy. And, you know, the number may or may not be important for you. I'm going to show you the numbers just because I think it's helpful. But it's kind of like a fire scale. Everyone's comfortable with something like this. You know, there are actual units, um, they're called Scovell units, actually, of spiciness of that molecule called capsaicin. But I think everybody gets that, you know, the more little chili peppers you have, the hotter that salsa is going to be. So we're going to look at the possible oxidation states of carbon. Now, you need to remember that carbon needs four bonds to fill its valent shell. Okay, so carbon will always need four covalent bonds going to it. And then, if you add oxygen or remove hydrogen, that's when carbon is being oxidized. So its oxidation number goes up. And if you remove oxygens or add hydrogens, carbon gets reduced and its oxidation number goes down. So here we go. We're going to look at a series of molecules and we're going to show how easy this is. Let's look at methane. Methane is CH4. Methane, you can burn as a, as a fuel. Cows actually fart methane, just in case you needed to know that. They actually contribute to global warming. Okay, so in order to look at the changing oxidation states of carbon, we're going to start with carbon at its most reduced form. Methane, CH4, looks like this. And as you can see, you can't add any more hydrogens to carbon. So this is carbon's most reduced state. Now I'm going to show you the fine print. If you add up all the oxidation numbers, in a non-charged molecule, the sum has to equal zero because methane is not charged. So if we know that hydrogen is always plus one, what does carbon have to be in order for the sum to be zero? This is basic math. So carbon has to be minus four. That is the oxidation state of carbon in methane. Cool. Let's look at methanol. Methanol you may know as wood alcohol, and this is very, very toxic to drink. And we're going to see why it's so toxic, actually, in a second. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a little bit of oxidation here. So when you look at the structure of methanol, you'll notice now there's an OH group. 
right? So we've added an oxygen. So if you add up all the oxidation states of everybody who's playing in the molecule methanol, you can calculate what carbon's oxidation state has to be. And you guessed it, carbon has an oxidation state in methanol of minus two. Let's keep going. We're gonna look at formaldehyde. Most people know formaldehyde as a preservative. And by the way, if you drink that methanol, that wood alcohol, it gets oxidized in your body to formaldehyde. And that will cause blindness, among lots of other things. All right, let's look at how much more oxidized carbon is now. So check out the structure of formaldehyde, and let's do those calculations again. What is carbon's oxidation state now in order for the sum to be zero? Yep, you guessed it. Now carbon's oxidation state in the molecule formaldehyde is zero. So do you see what's happening? As we are adding oxygen and removing hydrogen, carbon is getting more and more oxidized. Keep going with me, guys. Formic acid is next. Formic acid you'll find in ants. Actually, the Latin name formica is the word that we use for ants. The nastiness of some ants, like this fire ant, comes from the acidopore. You want to watch out for that end. That's where the formic acid comes out. Did you know that they used to actually squish up ants and distill them to get formic acid out? That was the original source. Oh, that's gross. Let's look at the oxidation state of carbon in a molecule of formic acid. So look, we're adding more oxygens. We're removing more hydrogens. Do the math. And what is carbon's oxidation state now? It's plus two. Can it be more oxidized than this? The answer is yes. We can take out all the hydrogens and we make carbon dioxide. Everybody knows CO2, right? Let's calculate the oxidation state of carbon in a molecule of carbon dioxide. So we add the oxygens and now we're gonna do the math and to figure out what carbon's oxidation state must be, it's all gotta add up to zero. So carbon in this case must be plus four. So do you see what's happened? As you add oxygens and remove hydrogens, carbon's oxidation state is increasing. On the other hand, if you go the other way, obviously carbon is being reduced. This is how you can look at organic molecules and tell what kind of reaction is happening. Most biology students won't need to calculate the oxidation state, you know, to calculate that number. But do you see how powerful that is? And it's actually pretty simple to do. So we're going to apply this to cellular respiration. Okay, this is what everybody has to memorize. Glucose gets oxidized, oxygen gets reduced, and the bonds that are being broken, that energy gets stored in the molecule ATP, and that's what we use for cell work. Let's look at the structure of these things to really understand and not just memorize why is glucose being oxidized. Well, I don't know if you see it now. So we're looking at glucose in a linear structure, right? It doesn't actually look like this, but it's easy for us to see all the atoms. It looks a lot like methanol from our little story of carbon, doesn't it? It is an alcohol. And now you can see the similarity. What's happening is carbon's oxidation state is increasing. It's being oxidized. We're adding oxygens and we're removing all of those hydrogens. So now it's very easy to see with these very simple rules what's happening. So now do you see what's happening to that oxygen gas? Oxygen gas is being reduced. You are reducing the number of oxygen atoms and you're adding hydrogen. That's it. Look at photosynthesis. Does it make sense? When you look at that CO2, it is being reduced to glucose and water is being oxidized to oxygen gas. Now, you have to add energy to do this, and that, of course, comes from the sun in this case. Lastly, let's look at an electron carrier. Students hate electron carriers, the NADs and FADs, right? NADH to NAD. And you're always asked, when you go from NADH to NAD, what's happening? Well, just look and see what's happening with that little hydrogen right there. We're losing the hydrogen, so it's being oxidized. When you go the other way, you're gaining that hydrogen. That's the only thing that's changing in these molecules. That's reduction. So the thing to keep in mind, too, is that, as the name implies, if something is being oxidized, something else must be reduced. It is a coupled reaction. It's like the exchange of cash, right? You don't just go outside and throw cash in the air. I mean, if you do, I'll, I'll follow you around. Um, somebody always is accepting that cash. So... 
What we've seen is that redox reactions are coupled, and that by knowing a very simple rule and understanding a very simple principle, you should be able to answer those nasty questions, which really aren't so nasty now, in your general biology class about looking at photosynthesis and respiration and those electron carriers and actually understanding what the hell is going on. As always, I hope that was helpful. Thank you so much for visiting the Penguin Prof channel. Please show your support by clicking those buttons, like, share, and subscribe. Join me on Facebook, follow on Twitter. Good luck.